Hey folks, I'm ShellThingsIndustry.com. In front of you, you see a, pan a periapical radiograph of tooth number 18, or FDI tooth number 37. So this chief complaint of this 22-year-old male who presented three weeks ago for evaluation for a referral of tooth number 18. Uh, history of present illness, the patient had a root canal completed in high school, he can't really remember, which was approximately five years ago, and he thinks it was fairly decayed, that's why that he needed a root canal completed at that time. Medical history, zero medications, no medical conditions, zero allergies. He had an intraoral vertical ramus osteotomy in 2010, and that's for uh, mandibular setback, orthognathic surgery. He does not have lip numbness, or also known as paresthesia. He does not smoke and he does not drink alcohol. The clinical exam is a, a broad generalized six millimeter probing depth, the distal portion of the tooth. I tried to track the sinus. There's a sinus track or fistula track, whichever term you like to use. I tried to track it with gutta perca and I just couldn't get the, uh, the point to go anywhere. And this is the radiograph of that. There's a class one Miller mobility, no palpation pain, no separation, and he, percussion test was negative. So radiographically, we see tooth number 18, uh, has a, a PFM crown, which I can tell uh, from the intraoral examination. From the osseous crest, we can see that the lamin dura is fairly intact all the way to the apical portion, the mesial root, whereas we start to get uh, widening of the lamina dura and continuing widening all the way around the distal portion of the root and the mid portion of the distal root it, the lamina dura becomes uh, conf confluent, confluent with the distal part of the root. Inside we have sort of a metallic we, it, looks to, it appears to be obturated with some sort of radiopaque material and we also have something which appears to be a carrier or an endodontic file. So one of the things that I learned, and actually the diagnosis according to the most recent uh, American Association of Endodontics, Endodontists, is this is a previously treated tooth number 18 with asymptomatic apical periodontitis. Now the difference between this and this diagnosis tw on the 20th of March and what it was today when he said that the little the fissure started to fill with pus as he described and he expelled the pus into his mouth as he described to me we would because it has a, a draining fistula tract we would now call that number 18 previously treated with chronic apical abscess so we're going to retreat this in two stages now one of the things that I learned about these cases specifically was that and I removed, uh, these were actually metal carriers, so, so we can determine. If you see on a radiograph, you have obturation, and it comes to a really thin, fine, spindly little end, but it looks like super radiopaque. It's probably a carrier. And you can see it here. I mean, that's an amazing dense fill for such a fine little canal. And actually, I still have the carriers here. So here are the carriers, which uh, my endodontic mentor thinks they are. They're nitai. You can see they kind of look like porcupine quills in the dog that we used to have as a kid. So if you are anticipating retreating uh, a canal like this, uh, it's fairly straightforward. Just make sure that you have, um, you don't sever this off, sever off the coronal portions when you go into the canals. So that aids once you remove some of the gutta perca and the cement and composite that was around it at least you have something to grab on to the end of end of the uh, the carrier as well if the carrier doesn't come out initially easy to place some uh, some sort of solvent into the canals and dissolve some of the gutta perca so that's that case and the learning point so remember spindly little doesn't look like it uh, was filed very much. It probably wasn't. It was, that's just the, uh, the carrier, the radio pay carrier at the apical portion of the canals. Cheers.